Welcome back. You're watching Breakfast Now. Where do you think the best spot is to find an 18th century wig curler, children's shoes from the Tudor period, and, if you fancy, a glass eye? Well, Laura Maitland found all of these items and many more in the River Thames. She's a mud larker and spent over 15 years unearthing historical treasures from mud banks. And Lara has written a book. And joins us now. Morning, morning to you. Morning. Hello. So just uh, mud larking, I, the clues in the title, you, the, the, the river drops a little and you get out there and just look for stuff. I do. The Thames is tidal. So twice a day the river drops and you can go down onto the foreshore and you can search for history. And you find extraordinary things. I do. Every tide uncovers something different. It's eroding. The foreshore is eroding. And um, basically what the foreshore is made up of is rubbish. Um, so they used rubbish to pack up the foreshore to make it flat so that the barges could sit on it. It was a working environment. Um, and over time, the revetments that held all the rubbish in have broken. And um, the, the river is now eating away at it and reclaiming the foreshore. And so every time the river drops, you find something different. Well, you've brought in some stuff that you have mm -hmm. found. Um, where do you keep all this, by the way? <laughs> Um, I have a very carefully curated collection. I've got a very big um, printer's chest uh -huh. uh, with 18 drawers and most of it fits in there. I've got smaller bits on shelves all over the house. So we have um, a shoe from which period? That's a Tudor shoe, that's from the 16th century. How do you know it's the Tudor period? Um, partly because where I found it. Yeah. Um, they found very, very similar ones on the Mary Rose and it's been recorded on the Portable Antiquities um, Scheme database. It seems so remarkably intact. It yeah. is. The, um, the rivers and um, the mud is anaerobic, which means it doesn't have oxygen, which means that things are preserved just beautifully. The, the combs there are actually made of wood. So even material, which are, that's presumably, that's leather, is it? Leather, yeah. yeah. I mean, leather's partially preserved anyway. The, the, the thread had rotted away, but when I pulled it out of the mud, it was, it was intact and absolutely so perfect. The, the wooden combs you've pointed out as yes. well. Did you find those all together? Or? No, no. I mean, I've been doing this for, for over 15 years, so I've found all this stuff over a long, long period of time. I mean, you're going to find a lot of personal stuff as mm. well. And, and, and I'm sorry if this is freaking anyone out, but um, <laughs> it's a, it is a glass eye. I'm not going to pick it up because actually... It does creep me out a little bit. But what do you what did you think when you find something like this and you find like dentures and things like that as well? I do. I find basically if it fits down a toilet, I can find it in, in the Thames because raw sewage still goes into the Thames. Um, this one um, did give me a bit of a shock staring back at me from the mud. But it's beautiful. It's made of glass. It's handmade. Mm. Um, and it's even, if you look carefully, it's even got little tiny um, blood vessels. Yeah. It. It's just beautiful. I, I can't help but ask, but you, over the time you must have found some fairly gruesome... Mm -hmm. things. Would that be fair to say? Yes, I have, yes. Um, a couple of months ago I found a, a human skull. Um, it's an old skull, I think. Um, it's been reported to the police and uh, uh, they've got hold of it now. Um, they actually came and took my DNA just to rule me out of any investigation, but I think it's probably from one of the prison hulks that was moored up in the estuary. Um, when people died on there, there were awful, dreadful places. Lots of people died. They'd just row them to the nearest bit of land and bury them in shallow graves and of mm. course it's eroding out now. I know. You, uh, I think I read you found a ring, but you threw it back. I did. Um, I find a lot of personal possessions. People throw things into the river because they think once it's in the river, it's gone forever. But what they don't realise is that it's um, idle, and people go down and they find things. Uh, we, mudlarks find a reasonable amount of engagement and wedding rings on, on the foreshore. What so. are the rules about uh, finders keepers? I mean, you know, if you find something that is clearly yes. valuable, yes. is there? Do you have to? Do you have to tell someone? How does it work? You need a licence to mudlark. Um, so anybody going down onto the foreshore with the intention of searching needs to have a licence from the Port of London Authority. Anybody can apply for a licence. Under the terms of the licence, anything of historic importance has to be reported to the Museum of London or a fines liaison officer. Anything that qualifies as treasure, simply put, it's quite complicated, but simply put, anything over 300 years old, made of gold or silver, um, qualifies as treasure and legally it has to be reported. One thing I love um, about things like this is you learn things. And did you know where the origins of codswallop came from? Uh, well, I didn't know this, but... Cod bottles. Cod bottles, yes. Uh, cod bottles were very um, clever invention by the Victorians to um, seal fizzy drinks bottles. So there's a little marble inside the, the neck of it, and the, the pressure of the gas pushed the marble up into the, um, the rim of the bottle. And to open it, people would give it a big bash, 
and that's where Codswap points. And they're quite rare to find, aren't they? Complete ones, because children smash them for the marbles inside. <laughs> Can I just ask as well, presumably, as you're looking for things, do you find that uh, we do so many environmental stories, mm. you find a lot of rubbish, I mean, genuine rubbish? Yeah, I mean, what really strikes me is that the, the objects that were left behind, historical objects, are all gonna, they're all going to break down and they'll all end up back in the mud, essentially, back to what, where they came from. But the from. shopping trolleys what and the... What we're leaving behind is plastic. Plastic. Plastic and wet wipes. I mean, wet wipes is a real problem in the Thames. At Hammersmith, there is an area where um, it's just an island of wet wipes. So we're changing the geography of the river with our rubbish. Well, it's fascinating what you find, and um, if you're interested as well, because you also found a type of font that didn't exist. I can't go into it because we're out of time, but <laughs> that's how you can find out. Lara, thank you so much. And thank you can you. find out in Lara's book, Mudlarking, Lost and Found on the River Thames. That's all from us today. Programme back on tomorrow at 6am. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.